Are you absolutely certain, yes or no? Did you see that train? You're darn cute and I've seen that train. It sure did go by my face. That's all I wanted to know. Mr. Conley, you're an operator at the old-time station, are you not? Yes, I am. And if I'm not mistaken, you were on duty the night of the 13th last month. I was. And heard an eastbound train. Is there any reason why you didn't hold 101 was coming west on a single track? Because there was no train to hold. That's why. There ain't nothing eastbound after dark until 11.55. Unless it's a freight or a special. Your chief dispatcher can tell you that. Mr. Conley, are you positively sure that... Show me. Close that window, please. Tell me, Mr. Conley. How do you account for now? There was no train. I'd know if a train passed my tower, wouldn't I? There was two a train. Mr. Harrington, I've been a railroad man all my life. When I see a headlight bearing down on me, when I have the right of way, I know it. You bet. Yeah. Huh. Nobody's doubting anybody's word. It's merely that the reports and testimonies have been conflicting to the point of improbability. Tell us more in detail just what occurred, Nolan. Well, we were rolling along about 60 miles an hour. Axel, my fireman here, had trouble with the oil pressure. And when I turned back, there was a headlight bearing down on me at full speed. I gave my train all the air it could stand. Just had time to yell to Axel. That's all I knew till I woke up in the hospital. Yeah, sure. And he was right there, too, Mr. Harrington. I saw the headlight, and when Smokey picked on the brakes, I pricked in your fly right straight into the fireboxes. Yeah. You can call it a goose train if you want. But I was a pretty good goose that can race a boat like this here. You feel it is hair. There is something the hardest fell head about, I can tell you. Well, what are we stopping here for? Don't you know we're late? I've got to go and see Dad, get the keys to the beach house. I suppose you'll be all day talking to that frog-sized stenographer. Now, if you keep me now, waiting, I'll... honey, don't get haunting of the Andres. I'll be back right away, as quick as you can powder your nose. And it needs it. We've stopped at so many places since we started. I feel like I'm working on a milk route. All right, hurry up and get your keys. Tell my father I want to see him right away at train port. I'm sorry, but he's very busy. They're holding an inquiry about the last wreck. Wreck? Was there a wreck? Of course. Well, that's a shame. But there's nothing like a wreck to wear out an engine. <laughs> I had to see him just the same way. I have orders to keep everyone out of there, even you. His own son? Which one of these men is forward of your wrecking crew, Mr. Reynolds? You are, I believe, Mr. Donovan. Yes, sir. Say, Dad, if you get the keys to the beach house, I want to get down there. Well, I've been waiting for a minute. Shall I question him, Mr. Harrington? Yes, please. Mr. Donovan, how soon after the wreck were you and your crew standing by? About two hours. I see. And did you make any investigation as to the cause of the wreck? Well, I took a look around, but I didn't have much time to do any investigating. Was there any evidence of another train having been there? No. No, there wasn't, Mr. Harrington. But of course there wouldn't be. There was no collision. And railroad tracks is railroad tracks, Mr. Harrington. And all they show is that trains can go over them. Tell me, Donovan. Was there any identification that the track might have been tampered with? No, sir. If there had been, I couldn't have told anyway. When the engine was derailed, it chewed up about 50 feet of track. Perhaps the foreman of the road crew that repaired the track after the wreck might have observed something. Which one of these men is he, Reynolds? He isn't here, Mr. Harrington. We won't be able to get in from his division until tomorrow. We were unable to reach him as soon as the rest. Uh-huh. Well, send telephonic communication to get him here immediately. That'll be all, gentlemen. We'll postpone this inquiry until the other witnesses arrive. Say, 
it, Dad. Give me the keys to the beach house, will you? Uh, sailing yachts, padding tennis balls, golf balls, polo balls. I'm getting tired of it. If you're only a he-man yourself, instead of a mere... Nincompoop. Thanks. You'll be down here where you belong, trying to help me solve the mystery of these wrecks. Dad, give me the keys now. You'll be a mighty sight later before you get those keys. I can't find them. But even if I could, you're not going to get them. You understand? Now that's fine. Why are you going through your pockets? If you should find an extra hundred, I could use that too. See here, young man. Before you get another cent from me, you'll settle down to business. Now that is fine. Reynolds, I've been looking at that letter again. The thought strikes me. Do you suppose those fellows that offered to buy our road, do you suppose that they could have had anything to do with these wrecks? No. No, that's impossible. They're men of irreproachable reputation. I've investigated them very carefully. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. Oh, that's all right. Not having about the last one. Yeah, there's Hanson standing over here. Come on, and ask a priest. Swedish pains don't burn good. I don't care what Hanson. Come on, now, Swedish come on. pains do burn good. Priest, you just said don't burn good. I tell Hanson. I tell him. Do they argue like that all the time? You should hear him play pinochle. Well, I should love to. Would sometime this week be convenient? Oh, I don't think it would be for you. You see, Dad and I live at the other end of the division. Oh, well, that's fine. Think I could come and see you, huh? Oh. I have to be going now, for I'll probably meet with a serious accident. Goodbye, Miss Nolan. I'll be seeing you. Uh -huh. So long. Dan, are you busy? Of course I'm busy. What do you want now? Nothing. Here. Say, what's the matter with you anyway? Nothing. Just bring him back to you, that's all. What's the catch? What do you want now? A job. You mean... You want to work? Yep. Oh, I know. You're right, Dad. Of course I'm right. I ought to go to work. You know what I want you to do for me? Assign me to investigate these wrecks. Fine. Fine. I'll send you out to the other end of the division. I'll write a letter to the superintendent... Oh, no. Now, wait a minute, Dad. If I'm going to investigate these wrecks, let me do it my own way. I'll get a job at the roundhouse so nobody will know who I am. It won't arouse anybody's suspicion. Say, see? wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you working for me or am I working for you? I'm not going to have any young... Whippersnapper. Young... Whippersnapper telling me what... Say, will you please stop putting the words into my mouth? But I want to handle this in my I own way. I tell you that every time but I Dad, offer to listen. say anything, you stop... If they know telling... who I am... Well, all right. It's okay with me. That's fine. Now remember, you're Bruce Harrington from now on. And I'm your friend or something looking for a job. Very well, my man. And uh, this letter will introduce you as Bruce Harrington. Now wait, the division head doesn't have to sweep up offices or dust off engines, does it? No, I told you all you had to do. Not so worried, is it? No, but it will be if your dad finds it out. Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm awfully sorry. <laughs> look out, look out. Watch your step. You want to be able to walk down there? Boy, that was a good-looking girl. Did you see her? I sure did. And I want to meet her, too. She's the daughter of Smokey Nolan. Well, then you know her. No, but we're going to know her. Now listen, you breathe up and introduce yourself as Bruce Hank, you see? And the old man will be tickled pink. Then you can introduce me. 
I'm beginning to see the advantage of being a railroad magnet already. Sure, it's a cinch. Yes, yes, I'm Nolan. Well, I'm Bruce Harrington. Oh, Bruce Harrington. My father's president of the road. Oh, you're old man. Uh, you're Mr. Harrington's son. <laughs> well, I'm very pleased to meet you. How did you know uh, who I was? Uh, oh, I've heard my dad speak of smoking holes many, many times. Is that so? <laughs> oh, pardon me. This is my daughter Caroline. Mr. Harrington's son and president of the road. Says he's heard his father speak of me. <laughs> How do you do? How do you do? And this is my fireman, Mr. Axelson. Oh, hello. Pleased to meet you. Won't you sit down? Well, yeah, you sit down, too. Uh-huh. Didn't I see you in my father's office today? Why, yes, I was there, but I didn't see you. Oh, uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, well, I, I wasn't uh, there. Uh, 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 <coughs> oh, uh, pardon me, folks. This is an old friend of mine, uh, Mr. Eggplant. What? What'd you say his name was? Smith is the name. I'm very glad to know you, Miss Nolan. How are you? My father, Mr. Smith, and Mr. How are you, Smith? How do you do? Glad to know you. You're traveling, too, I see. Yes. I'm on my way to see a pinochle contest. Uh -huh. You play pinochle? You bet, yes. I was the champion of Minnesota, too. Yes? <laughs> champion. Hi, Bill. Hi. Sorry I'm late. The old woman again. What's the matter? Doesn't the weather agree with her? That's more than I could expect of any weather. Good thing I brought that lantern along. Can't see three feet ahead of you. No moon. Yeah. What's the setup? Everything on time? Yeah. Everything but you. Hey, 101 lost 10 minutes at Morgan Hill. But he'll make that up before he goes by. Stay. When Smokey gets back on that run, you won't have to be worrying any about 101. Speaking of Smokey, that guy testified at the inquiry that he saw a train coming right at him. What do you know about that? Why, he's crazy. They're calling it the Phantom Express. Phantom Express. A train is either a train or it ain't a train. This train ain't. And we're the guys that know it. You're right. Wait a minute, boys. They're changing shift. Another guy lands it, you'll only have Red to take care of. All right, okay. Now, Nick's on the hot stuff. I don't want him blasted. <laughs> that's easy, just to tap one of the head and that's that. Uh, that's another thing. I want this guy to see the Phantom Express. Wait a minute, boys. He's coming out. Hey, Red. If you get lonesome, there's some ghost stories there on the desk. <laughs> Good night, Bill. Good night, Red. All right, boys, do your stuff. Come on, Buck. All right, and remember, no rough stuff. Okay. Hello, Lone Pine. Chief Dispatcher calling. Oh, sorry. Conley speaking. Number 101 has right of way westbound. Nothing eastbound to the left 45. Check. Better hold that freight train on the side until 101 gets by. Okay, Chief. Okay. Put up your hands. Don't move. Take your hand away from that switch. What? Get him! Get him! Slim, I'll take him. It's all right. Quit it! Don't worry. Drop that gap. We can handle this baby, all right? Well, he can't take it. Start. It's all right, Buck. Get over there to the window. Wait. Can you handle yes, it? Yes, okay. Now just relax a little. Have a little impatience. We'll show you the Phantom, all right. Here you are, Buck.
Hey, by the way, uh, you know where I can get a good room and board near the roundhouse at the end of the division, you know? Near the roundhouse at the end of the division? Yep. Now, well, let's see. Let's see. Oh, I would have to ask Mother, of course. But you could stay at our house and share Jack's room. Oh, that suits you. Oh, gee. That would be great, only <laughs> Nolan might. Oh, oh, one more would tickle her to death. <laughs> My dear, I just imagine after the two awful accidents that you didn't know anything for a long time. Oh, yeah. I was just this smart, this before. Is your uh, daughter enjoying the trip? Hmm, I guess she is. She's out there on the observation end with the uh, president's son. <laughs> yes, sir, the president's son. Hmm. talking to unless you did. <laughs> All right, Bruce. <laughs> Don't be long, children. Supper's nearly ready. All right. Isn't it strange that you and Mr. Harrington are both called Bruce? Yeah. Quite a coincidence. Is it all right for me to use these hangers? Yes, that's all right, Mr. Smith. Bruce is the name. All right, Bruce. Have you any sisters? Who, oh, me? Mm-hmm. No. Surely you have some cousins. Mm -hmm. Nope. But I have an aunt in Brooklyn. Ninety years old today. Oh, dear. Now that I have explained the technicalities to you, Mr. Harrington, you see why we really need this new system so badly. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, your technical points are very well taken, Callahan. Uh, but I wish you'd write this out on paper and I'll send it to the home office. I'll do that, Mr. Harrington. 
But I, I wish you'd step down into the roundhouse and see how badly we really need this new water system. Come on ahead, big boy. Don't worry about us. Let's see. Come on, honey. Come on, let go. Oh, dear, dear. Well, uh, how big of a uh, plant do you think we could install? Oh, I should uh, suggest that about uh, 500,000 gallons a day would be sufficient. Oh, uh, let's make it 750,000. We'll put in a big plant. <laughs> hey, you can't smoke in here. You get fired for letting that. For me? Ha, they can't fire me. Why, the foreman and I are just like that. That's me. As you see, it's all right here. Now then, Mr. Harrington, if you'll come on inside, I'll give you my idea of what we should do. All right, fine. Now, as I said up in the uh, office, Mr. Harrington, I have it all here on the blue pin. Now, you understand the technical terms, don't you? Yes, yes, of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I figure that if we put the plant right outside of that wall... Yes. And, yeah, ...and run the pipes from one end of the roundhouse to the other, then we can put a lot of little pipes uh, uh. from down from the main pipe, which will lead into the stalls. Now, in doing that, we can eliminate a lot of boiler washing. It's just what I said. That's fine. Who did that? Hey, you! Come up out of there. Come on! Come on out of there! Yes, sir. Hurry up! Oh, I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Callahan. Yeah? Well, you get a piece of waste. Get down there and wipe off those shoes. Who, me? Yes, you. Hey, Monaghan. Get some gasoline. Wait. Hey, hey, that's the wrong shoe. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, come on, hard hand, make it snappy. Say, what do you think these pants are, a roller towel? Well, from what they're hanging on, I wouldn't know. <laughs> hey, what's that white-collared bird hanging around here for? That's old man Harrington's son. Oh, that's the president's kid. He's learning the railroad business from the white pants down. <laughs> well. It won't be many moons before the big bugs of this road get off their high horses. Well, it ain't the moons that does it. <laughs> it's the lack of moons. Is the butter melted yet? Mm-hmm. Here it comes. Won't Daddy surprise when he finds out Mr. Harrington's coming to his birthday party? Lance, I hope those boys get home in time to get cleaned up before Mr. Harrington gets here. Mmm, doesn't that look grand? There. Well, here goes. There now. Doesn't that look good? Oh, it's lovely, Mother. Here come the boys, Mother. Hello oh, there. Oh, what you got? Let me see. Oh, me see. no. Come on, Jack. We've got to make it snappy now. He'll be home soon. Yeah. They didn't have a chance to test this train out. I hope it works. Gee, it's a beauty, isn't it? Oh, boy, look at that, huh? Oh. My dad gave me one of these when I was a kid. He did? Wood chopper? Wood chopper? Wood chopper, nothing. But if you're not, you ought to be. Listen, Smokey. A yoke is a yoke. And you're staring at the little bit too far. Hey, there's Smokey coming in. Well, there's Smokey! Hi, Bill. <laughs> Man, I got some important business, Smokey. I'll come be seeing you later. Goodbye, old boy. Goodbye, old partner. Hey, Smokey! Yeah. Come on, come on. 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 Come on.
Hello, Frank. How's things? Hey, Smokey, here's a letter for you. Oh, yeah. Thanks. 107. 107. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 
Yeah, Nero. <laughs> <laughs> Crack engineer! <laughs> Pulled out of the service. <laughs> Pulled out of the service. Well. <laughs> what's the matter? Oh, what is it? Tell me, dear. What is it? Pardon me, folks. Just a minute. I'd better go see what's up. It was all right a few minutes ago. What's the matter, huh? I know what's the matter. An order came in from Reynolds with his charge no longer on the count of the wreck. You mean to say that he's fired? Yes, I didn't know he knew it. Listen, Bruce, I oh, won't... Oh, no wine through. So this is the way they treat a man who's given the best part of his life to the road, is it? Well, the dickens with the road, Dad. Yeah, oh, that's right, Smokey. They, be all they right, can't boy. do this thing to a man, Dad. It's not right. I'll be all right, my boy. <laughs> Never mind, Smokey. We all know it wasn't your fault. <laughs> Here, take a look at this. I don't know why the dead night to say that we'll have definite information for you shortly. Sign it, Bruce. What information have you? <laughs> you got me, I don't know, but we're just playing a long shot, that's all. Mr. Harrington! My, that was a good dinner. Mr. Harrington! Mm -hmm. My goodness, I think it was a shame the way Smokey was treated around here. Why, he was the best engineer on the room. I'm sorry, but I had nothing to do with Mr. Nolan's dismissal. No, but you were the president's son. I'm sorry about all this, Miss Nolan. It puts me in a rather embarrassing position. Perhaps I'd better go. Wait a minute, young fella. Do you think the smoke gave us to blame for this? I told you I had nothing to do with the matter. It'll have to be taken up with the Home Office. Good night, Miss Nolan. Never mind, darling. Everything will be all right. Well, I guess I can begin over again. <laughs> no, you won't have to. Other fellows have done it, anyway. <laughs> Oh, you dear. Now, don't you worry, Carolyn. Everything's gonna be all right. When they find out the real cause of the wreck, Harry and State, you're dead. Suppose they don't find out. Oh, but they will. How? Because I'm gonna find out. And that's a promise. your fingers get so sticky. You're allowed to find it not so healthy around here. <laughs> Can you imagine that guy making himself to home in my coat? <laughs> Come on. Uh, We'd better report this to the office. Not yet. We've got to follow those birds tonight. But it... But nothing. We're on the right track now. The track the Phantom Express goes down. Come on. Mother. 
Yes, dear. It looks all right. Now, if we only have enough for that other window. Mother, I hardly think we have enough of this material. I think I'd better run down to the store and get some more. I'll be right there. I know I shouldn't have taken the liberty of coming here, and Dad would be furious if he knew, but he's so proud, and you see... Carolyn. Uh, I mean, Miss Nolan. Uh, I'll do everything I can, and perhaps we can have him reinstated. But Certainly very kind of you, Mr. Harrington. I hope you don't think so. Oh, not at all. I have to run down the street. Perhaps I can give you a lift. Why, yes, if it isn't out of your way. <laughs> well, I'd be delighted. <laughs> I certainly appreciate it. These are great options you have. Don't tell me. Look at it. All right. I hope Slim was right, though. That's him now. Hit it? Yeah. He's got a dame with him. Ah, oh, what's the difference? Come on, let's get him. Okay. I can't imagine what's keeping Carolyn. She just ran down to the store for a minute and she's been gone a lot. There she is now. Who's here? Axel. Yeah, sure. Why didn't you go out on 101? Who? Me? Why, of course you. Who'd you think I meant? Me? Excuse me, Mrs. Nolan. I tell you, Smokey, I was thinking it over. And if you wasn't good enough for the road, I wasn't too. So I quit. You quit? You, you quit, I mean. Yeah, sure. I wouldn't fire for any other engineer but you, Smokey. To heck with them on the railroad. But I tell you what we should do. We should jump in my car. We should go down and have a talk with the president, son. Well, it wouldn't do any good. Besides, he wouldn't even see me. Wouldn't see you? Why wouldn't he see you? Wasn't he here last night for dinner? Wasn't he? Come on now, Smokey. We should go down. Do this. Yes, go on for me, well, please. Well, maybe you're right. Come on, Smokey. All right. Come on, get along. Come on, Charlie. 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 Come on
Caroline left the house at noon in a few minutes, and she hasn't come back yet. They just told me in the office that young Mr. Harrington left with her hours ago, and nothing's been heard from her since. Yeah, I don't see Hal's car any place. Oh, I guess they got him all right. Yeah. Come on, let's get in our car and get out of here. We gotta get a car right away. We'll miss them. Hey, man, it's at the warehouse. Oh, no, right. what's this all about? Come on, come on. I know where they are. Hey, there they go now. Let's yeah. wait here a minute. Don't let them spot us. My goodness, this, this sure is the lonely place around here. Say, Bruce, Bruce, what is that they down there? Looks like an old barn. Come on, let's go. No, no, no. It'll be dark in about 20 minutes. We'll put off the lights and drive down there and surprise them. But suppose they've got Sis and Harrington down there. That's all the more reason why we should take no chances. Yeah, that's them. Well, you got him, I see. Yeah, him and his dame. Hey, what's the idea? Ah, uh, she started to make a squad. Not a bad looker, either. Looks to me like there are four of them. Yeah. Gosh, sure. And there's four of them? How do you figure? You and Bruce is two, and me two, two and two is four. <laughs> <laughs> The Phantom goes down the line tonight. Oh, baby. Oh, but I wish that was dark. Come on in, I'll show you a gadget. All, All right, come on. What the dickens is that? Look. What's that? It doesn't sound like a car. Well, I'm a son of a gun. <laughs> Oh, that's the Phantom Express, is it? Come on, go right down that road again now. No, no, it's not the hill, it's big. Come on, let's go. Give it to Axel, boy, I wonder who this geek is. Let's find out. Well, excuse me, I was just looking for the main road. Well, this ain't it. This is private. Can't you read a sign? Yeah, sure. My, that's a good looking car. Is that your car? Yeah, who wants to know? Scram. Get him, Jack. Well, it doesn't sound like a Sunday school picnic. I think I'm just losing my temper here. Let me out of here! Oh, that you numb child of hell! Bruce! Let me out of here! Bruce! Jake, where can I get you out, kid? Come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Get up out of here. Here, get that gang in the car. Help along, will you? All right. Come on, get out of here. Take a snap now. Come on, dear. Come on, you Come on, fellas, on your feet. Come on, get, get in, in that car. Get hurry, in up. In hurry up. Hurry up. Go ahead, hurry up. Get right Come in. on. Fellas, come on, get in there. Come get hurry in. Up. Up. Dick. Dick. Yeah. I'll take Carol home. I'll meet you at the roundhouse. And listen, send Dad a telegram and tell him everything is okay. Uh -oh. yeah.
on, come on, let's go. Get them out. Hey, you. Scram. Come on, get going. Did you get that wire up to Dad? No, I couldn't. The wires have been done. Callahan, I've got to get a wire up to my father right away. It's important. <laughs> I'm afraid you're out of luck. You know, this storm has raised the dickens down the line. I know, but so No, no, I'm sorry. Everything is down. Traffic is at a standstill. Callahan, you've got to get me a crew. I'm going to get through tonight. I couldn't take a chance. I wouldn't accept the responsibility to even attempt such a thing. Did you get a good look at these men? Well, I got it. I halfway saw them, you know. Would you, would you know them again if you saw them? Well, I think I would. You can identify them, huh? Yeah, I can. Smokey, so, Smokey! You know. uh, wait a minute, what are you talking about? All the virus is down, the automobile roads are down, everything. Well, what's that got to do with me? Mr. Harrington's got to get the train to to his father by midnight, and you is just the man that can do it. You mean they want to, they want me to take a train through? Yeah, sure, come on, then. Oh. <laughs> oh, All right, let's go. can't let's go out go. tonight, it's too wet. Goodbye. Goodbye, Carol. Come on. Well, Dad, take your coat. Never yeah. mind the... Good luck. Good luck. Good luck, old-timer. You've got three hours and ten minutes to make a four-hour run. But if anybody thinks get out there, you can. Here, Dad. Come on. All right, take care, Caroline. I'll have right back. Come on, Dad. You're not we're coming to a town. Watch out. See it, Dad? Can't see it yet. I think it's Mendoza. Mendoza. Now I'm ten minutes out. I've got to cut fifteen minutes off my run. They can't get anything. Well, I've got to get a line through somehow. We're driving looting there. Get through. 
Sam. You made it the old field. I told you so, didn't I? Yes, you sure did. But it's not a sweet locomotive. We didn't burn any wood, anyhow. Oh, Smokey, lay off of me, will you please? Dead. Dead. Here I am. What is it? Have you signed anything yet? No, I haven't signed anything. How did you get through? Smokey Nolan, I found out all about this gang. They're nothing but a bunch of crooks. Why, what do you mean? You know what I mean. You tried to swindle my father out of control of this road. Yes, they did, Dad. Oh, don't talk nonsense. I'm not talking nonsense, Certainly Dad. You are. They're a bunch of crooks, do you hear? Dad, Smokey was right. There was a headlight bearing down on him the night of the wreck. There was? Yep. You see, Dad, the Phantom is an aeroplane with a headlight on it. We saw their men go to the hangar, and when they opened it, there was a large plane with a headlight suspended between the landing wheels. And then, they wheeled the plane out to test it, because they were going to run it tonight. As the plane took off, the noise in the motor stopped. We found they had a muffler on it. In the cabin of the plane was a five-foot loudspeaker, which attached to an instrument board, an amplifier, that increased the sound a hundred times. And through this, they played an electrical transcript, which sounded just as if the train were passing. The thing that fooled our signal men most was a column of smoke, which looked as if it was coming from a stack. They only run the Phantom on nights when there's no moon. It was impossible to tell it from a real train. Are you sure of this, boy? I'm absolutely sure, Dad. Why, George, I thought this was a scheme. A wreck of men. They're friendless. All proof that my boy can offer me, and I'll take his word against yours every time. Excuse me, Mr. Reynolds, but there's a couple of gentlemen not wearing the blue uniform. They're waiting to see you. Yeah, if you were... What do you mean? Come on, let's go out there. No more. Come on, let's go. Get going out. Get going. Come on. Well, we've been looking for you. Come on. Oh, Smokey. Good boy, Smokey. You too, Axel. Fine work, huh? <laughs> Sure, this is Steve Skid to have you back on the road again. Yeah, mighty good to me, too. I owe 